Hello everyone, Andy Serwich here, Technical Evangelist with Altero Software, and today I want to talk about Altero VM Backup version 8. We recently came out with Altero VM Backup version 8, and we've added some new great features that I want to talk to you about today. But more generally, I want to talk about the application, what it does, and what it can do for you and your organization. So the first area I want to start with is the dashboard. The dashboard is really your one-stop shop for all the high-level information having to do with your backup environment. So as you can see here, we've got backup drive status. You know, how much free space do I have? How much space are my backups consuming? We've got active and upcoming operations. So as you can see here, I have an actual backup running here, currently at 53%. We also have some deduplication and compression statistics. So if you wanna see how much space you're saving utilizing those underlying technologies we have, you can see a high level overview of that here. And you can also see recent operations. And the nice thing about the recent operations is, is it shows you informational messages, it shows you successes, shows you failures as well. So as notated by the red here, and you know backups that completed, but something wasn't quite right and we threw a warning. So you get a lot of good information here because of that. The one thing I want to cover after talking about the dashboard is what does it look like for setting up your first backup? You know, maybe you've installed the application, um, you've logged into it for the first time. How do you get your first backups going? And the way that you do that is you first come down here into the host view. You have to add in the virtualization hosts that have virtual machines that you want to back up using Altera VM Backup. In my particular case here, you can see I have two Hyper-V hosts. They're currently clustered. We support both Hyper-V and VMware. And adding a host is very simple. Come in here, add host, select which one, hit next, and then you just have to fill out this information and you can connect to the virtualization host. From there, if you actually have a license, if you've purchased a license, you click on license, you paste in your key, and your license type will change here. The next area that we'll direct you to is the backup locations view. So here you can see I've got a couple of backup locations already set up. Uh, our local repositories are here in the center of the screen. Our offsite locations here on the right hand side of the screen. And we really have a number of different options here. For local, local backup repositories, we can do physical drives, USB, eSATA, iSCSI. We can do network paths. For offsite locations, you know, we can do physical drives, drive rotations, network paths, uh, an Altera offsite server. Uh, we can do cloud backup to an Azure storage account. In that particular case, we don't require any virtual machine running in Azure. We just need a storage account with the connection string. And you simply come in here, you select next, and you paste in the connection string in order to connect to that Azure storage account. And we can immediately start using it for offsite backups. And once you have your backup locations defined here, assigning VMs to them is, is really just as easy as clicking and dragging. You can do that with an individual VM, or if you just want to quick and dirty add the entire environment to the same location, you can do so by dragging either the cluster or host objects themselves over. Now, I've got my environment already set up how I want it, so I'm going to discard those changes for now. And then finally, the last thing you have to do to take your first backup is you come down here, all the virtual machines that you have configured backup locations for, they will show up here in the top. You select the one that you want to run a backup for and hit take backup. From there, you can click on this little notice and it'll take you back out to the main screen here where you can actually monitor the job in operation. Now, the next area I want to talk about, and I kind of mentioned a little bit already, is replication. Now, we've been able to do offsite backups in Altera VM Backup for a while now. You know, you send your backups off site, and in the event of, you know, a site failure, your main building becomes a smoking crater in the ground, you go somewhere, you spin up another hypervisor, you point the backup application to that offsite repository, and you start doing recoveries. Now, the problem with that method is time. It takes time to pull that data across the wire and actually do the restore, right? Well, our new replication feature really enables a DR option. So you saw in the backup locations view, the mention of an Altera offsite server. With version eight, you can install an Altera offsite server at a remote location. You start using that as an offsite backup location. You replicate the changes every five minutes. And in the event of a, a site failure, you can bring up that virtual machine at the offsite location, which is much quicker than doing a restore back across the wire. So really this enables you to get your users back up and running quickly in the event of a disaster, much more quickly than if you had to recover all of that data 
um, and pull it across the wire. So really it's, it's a huge time saver. So if I want to actually configure this, I'd come down to replication and you'll see all of the different machines here that I have configured with offsite backup locations. Now, if I go to backup locations, you see I have this one, uh, it's a container host, it's a Docker container host I have set up. I've got it configured with this offsite location here. This happens to be a Hyper-V host that has our offsite server software installed on it. Once I connect to that, I can then enable replication for this particular VM. So I'm gonna enable replication. And what this will do, it'll use our underlying continuous data protection technology to do a backup every five minutes, replicate that across the wire. And uh, it'll also do a application consistent backup every four hours. So, you know, we'll utilize VSS to get a good application consistent backup. Um, but again, we're replicating those changes across every five minutes. So now that I've enabled replication, I can come out here to the dashboard and you can see that replication is now active. I can click on this and I can see that, hey, there's a replication job occurring and we have successfully configured this VM for replication. So again, great time saver, easy to set up, and uh, you'll have the ability to bring up this virtual machine on the offsite location in the event of a disaster. So now that you've set up backups and you've enabled replication for the virtual machines that you need to enable replication for, you're really set up for a couple of different recovery scenarios. So, you know, if you wanted to uh, and you needed to, you could recover an entire VM. Uh, if you needed to grab just a specific file, you would be able to. Uh, if one of the virtual machines that you're backing up happens to be running Microsoft Exchange and you had a user come to you and said, you know, hey, I'm missing email X, can you recover it for me? You would be able to do that. Additionally, if you configured offsite locations and you set up offsite backups other than just the replication, you would be able to pull down virtual machines and recover them from the offsite location uh, for the virtual machines that you enable replication for, you would be able to spin up an instance of that virtual machine at the offsite location. Uh, additionally, we also have a feature called boot from backup, which I'll get to in a second. So with that, for the sake of time, um, I'm going to demo just doing a very simple file level restore. And also we'll talk about boot from backup here in just a second. So in order to do a file level restore, we'll come down here under restore to file granular restore. We first choose the restore source. So in my case, I only have one. I'm gonna hit next. And then we have to choose a virtual machine to restore from. So in my case, I'm gonna select my file server. I'm gonna hit next. And what it's gonna do here, it's going to parse the backup repository for all the different versions of this particular virtual machine. What different points in time can we go back to? I'm going to select a date. I'm gonna hit next. And then it's going to scan the different disks that are associated with that backup. So here I can select my data volume. It's gonna parse that data volume and in a second it's gonna give me the option to select a particular partition on that data volume. I can select partition two. And now I have that very familiar uh, folder and files view. So if I drill down into my file system, uh, we'll go down here into this open SUSE installs folder and let's say I needed to recover something from this particular folder. This folder is just from an old OpenSUSE install that I had lying around, um, just basically made a backup of some of the files that I had off of this machine. And let's say I needed to recover this particular document containing notes from July 15th. I would select the file that I need to recover. I would hit next. And then I am given two options. I can either extract that file to a directory on the machine running Altero VM backup, or I can send that to a network location. By default, we will send it to C Altero Restored on the local directory of the machine running our software. And we'll actually create the folder path for you as well underneath this directory. So you can drill down and actually see what the, the folder hierarchy looked like in getting to that file. I would hit extract, we would extract the file, and away we would go. Now the other thing I want to talk about from a recovery perspective is boot from backup. Boot from backup is an option that we haven't really discussed yet. Um, and what it really allows you to do is it allows you to boot a virtual machine from the backup storage. And there's a couple of, of advantages to this as to why you would want to do it. So let's say uh, you had a virtual machine 
you know, fall over in the middle of the day. And maybe it's a particularly large virtual machine, one or two terabytes in size. If you were to do a full virtual machine recovery of that, it might take a while for that to, to happen, right? So in the meantime, your workers and your, your staff are not able to utilize whatever function or service that that virtual machine was providing. So what you can do instead of having to wait for that restore operation to occur is you can boot from backup on the affected virtual machine. We have two different modes here. Verification mode is it temporarily boots the machine just so you can make sure that it works. You can, you know, browse the, the machine. You can make sure everything is there. Um, or the other mode here is recovery mode. Now recovery mode is what you're gonna use in the situation that I laid out. Again, you have a virtual machine that fell over in the middle of the day. Um, you don't have time for a full recovery. You need to get it up quickly. You would select recovery mode here. And what recovery mode is gonna do is it is going to boot that virtual machine from the backup storage. Once the machine is up and running, it's going to start a recovery operation in the background. And while that recovery operation is happening, we're capturing all the changes that your end users are making on that particular workload. And once this, this process is done, once the recovery process is done, you, the administrator, come in here, you click a button, and it shuts down that instant boot version of the VM, takes all the changes that were captured during the day while the recovery operation was, was happening. We roll up all those changes into the newly recovered virtual machine. You boot that and away you go. You're only down as long as it took you to one, realize that there's an issue with the machine and two, run through this process. So as you can see here, it's a fairly simple process. It looks very much like the restore process I walked you through a few minutes ago. You select the virtual machine that you want to boot from backup. You select what version of that machine you want to boot from backup. You know, boot as, a couple of different options here to fill out that should look familiar. And then you click boot. And then, like I said, once that recovery job is done, the application will let you know, and you can take those steps that I laid out just a, uh, a second ago. Now, one other tool I want to make you aware of is what we call the Altero VM Backup Cloud Management Console. Now, this tool is a web-based utility. You simply access it by going to manage.altero.com. And what this utility allows you to do is it allows you to manage multiple instances of the application I've just showed you, and it allows you to manage all of them from a single pane of glass. So if you're a, uh, a standalone business and you have multiple locations with servers, uh, and workloads that need to be backed up, you could manage all those different installations from this tool. Uh, if you're a, a service provider or a reseller, you could manage all of your different customers' backup applications from this single pane of glass. Now, the, the portals are the same between, the, between end user and between service provider or reseller. The only difference is, is resellers and MSPs are gonna get this customer tab here. What this customer tab allows you to do is it allows you to uh, basically configure the way that your customers are, are notified of issues um, and things like that. It also allows you to handle subscription billing if, uh, if you wanna do like a subscription billing type of model for your customers. If you're just a standalone business and you're using this to manage multiple instances of our product across several locations, the view that you're gonna be most interested in is this Altero VM backup installations view. So here you can see a full list of all the different Altero VM backup installations that are associated with this instance of the cloud management console. You can see the versioning information. You can actually go in and manage backup locations, offsite locations, backup encryption keys. You know, you can see the, the virtual machines that are associated with this particular install. Uh, you can do a lot with this tool. Now, uh, this tool would really necessitate its own video, but I wanted to let you know that it's out there in case you need to manage multiple instances of our product from a single pane of glass. The final thing that I wanted to talk about in this video was talk about how amazing our support team is. When you sign up with Altero VM Backup, you're gonna get an amazing support team that provides a 30 second call answer guarantee. That is a lightning fast response, 30 seconds. You didn't hear me wrong there. And I have nothing but good things to say about our support team. We don't do tiered support here at Altero. You're not gonna sit on hold in escalation queues or anything like that. When you call, you get an answer fast and the person that answers the phone is the person that owns your issue from start to finish. 
and we take care of the issues quickly and professionally. And we are more than happy to do so. And we hope that you have a great experience when working with support here at Altero. If you're interested in learning more and would like to try out Altero VM Backup for yourself, you can go to our website at www.altero.com. You can click on this link right here, download your free trial, and you'll get access to a 30-day full-featured trial, or we also have a free edition that is free for two VMs forever. In order to access either of these, you simply select which version you want, fill out the form, and click download now. Thanks for watching.